Welcome back to Solidity Programming. My name is Alex Louie. And today I want to talk about reference types. And we can't talk about reference types without, without mentioning the data location of your types. Last video we talked about value types uh, and what they mean. It means you always create a copy if you're doing an assignment or a function, uh, passing it through a function. And now we talk about reference types and how that works in terms of uh, assignments and passing them through a function. So I, wa I want you to look at this example here that I, co I c kind of copied over from the Solidity docs and it took me a while to understand it myself but after I, I think I can clear things up a bit. So any type of re any reference type is defined as an array or a struct. So arrays and structs reference types. What does that mean? means that when you do an assignment from a struct to a struct then there won't be a copy made it'll be a reference pointer that's gonna that's gonna point to the other struct and I'll show you examples uh, over here and same thing with an, an array if you if you do an assignment or you're copying it through a function then it's uh, because it's a reference type it will pass in uh, obviously a reference but there's an exception when you're passing it through function parameters because by default the default data location of any function parameter is memory so that means that anything that's coming in is being copied from memory and as according to this, the docs in the EVM is if you're copying from a memory variable and the memory variable is a reference type doesn't matter it's gonna actually make a copy of it and store it in whatever you declare it um, I mean we've just gonna store it in whatever you're assigning it to so for this particular example memory array is a reference type but the, the data location of this is memory because by default the all memory locations of function parameters are memory. Well, I'll show you an example later on where you can actually play with this and not make it memory, you can make it storage and then you would do a, you would have a reference assignment. So for this particular example the memory array coming in is reference type but it's 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 placed in memory and when we do the assignment from a memory array which is of reference type but in memory to X which is of storage it's stored in storage but it's still a reference uh, type then memory array will be duplicated meaning there's going to be a copy made from memory array to X and it's going to create an independent copy and in the case so what does that mean it means that if you if you manipulate the values in X if you if you change the values in X then the values in memory array will not be affected because different memory areas different memory areas so if I said something along the lines of X of 0 is equal to 2 then memory of 0 will not be 2 because it's not a, it's no longer a, a reference it's actually an independent copy an independent copy so it's important to know these differences when we're dealing with assignments and uh, obviously just how the EBM works now in the next line what's happening is I'm passing a point I'm, I'm declaring a pointer to X which means that now I have a Y reference to X so anything that changes in X will also change in Y and vice versa so for example, if I update the length of Y, which really is I'm, I'm pointing to the address at X, the beginning address, then my new length of Y is going to be 2, and meaning that my array X is also going to be 2. It's also because it's passed by reference. I mean, it's, a, it's a, an assignment of reference type. Assignment of reference type. Now memory array will not get changed because again it's an independent copy. OK, 
Okay, memory will not get changed. Now, at the point where you're assigning a pointer to a to a storage variable, which is a reference type also, means that now this y will now be a pointer to any storage location, uh, storage location. It's, it's it's basically a storage pointer now. It's no longer it's not going to be a memory pointer. Which means that I cannot point Y to anything other than a storage pointer. I cannot point Y to anything other than a storage pointer. Meaning that if I try to if I try to point Y to a memory pointer such as memory array, then it wouldn't work because it's going to tell me. And I'll show you in a minute. It's going to give me an error saying you you already assigned it as a storage pointer. You can't assign it as a memory pointer. So we, as we go through down, down this example, uh, we've deleted x. So I delete the array, I clear the array, and I modify y at the same time. Now if I try and assign y to memory array, meaning I want to point this to memory, I can't because once I made it a reference pointer to x, a storage pointer, we we'll call it a storage pointer, it's incompatible. It's incompatible. So this will throw an error it'll say memory is not implicitly convertible to a storage pointer so can't implicitly convert a memory to a storage pointer so this will not work and you have to be aware of that is that once you declare a pointer to a storage variable then you can never reassign it to a memory variable anything that's declaring memory anything that's declaring memory okay so that that's basically your reference type so now let me give you another example where you wanna you wanna see how reference types assigned to each other work. Reference types assigned to each other work. So for example, let's say I have this function called f2 and I have a local variable of memory memory uh, storage type. And it's a reference type because it's an array, but I'm I'm saying that it's going to be it's going to be stored in memory. It's going to be stored. If I didn't put this memory keyword, then by default all local variables in a function are stored in storage. Okay, store storage. So what does this buy me? It actually it actually just tells the EVM that I'm not going to persist these variables in storage. And they're not going to be permanent. They're going to be just uh, memory memory processed, and once the smart contract stops from execution, then it will go away. Okay, now it will go away. Now, don't get this confused because remember, when you call a function, it goes onto the stack, and if it goes onto the stack and then you pop the function from the stack, although you have variables that are um, in storage, they're still going to be gone because they pop from the stack. Okay, only state variables are going to persist permanently up here. Okay, now it's different if you actually do uh, a memory assignment here, where now again this is temporary because once this contract is done, we're going to get rid of these variables here and. We have two two memory variables, b1 and b2, and I'm going to assign b2 to b1. So basically, b1 is a reference to b2, which means that they are not copies of each other, but they are actually reference reference b1 is referencing b2. So if I change b2, then b1 will also change. Okay, if I change b2 then B1 will also change. So let's take a look at this. So let's run this. I'm actually going to make this a bit bigger so that we can see here. Okay, so we're over here. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, uh, oh, I got it. Let me go to my test net because this seems to be wanting to, oh, no. Just gonna do the JavaScript JVM. That's that's because I want to do a simulation to a actual node. Don't worry about that. Just make sure that your environment is JavaScript to VM. So if I click create, and I click function two, 
So what I did, what did I do here? I did, I assigned 20 to B2 of zeroth index, which actually changed whatever was in B1. So if I look at, if I return B1, and it also returns 20. So you see that was a, not a copy, but it was a reference. That was a reference. Now, if I do the vice versa, so if I assign B1 to the value of 2, and that actually that actually reassigned the zeroth index to to two for b1 then b2 will also change okay b2 will also change so again when you do reference types then they're not a copy of each other so whenever you change on one side the other one's going to change and if you change one on the right then the other one's going to change so if i do this real quick okay i'm going to I'm going to make this so b1 0 is equal to 2 okay and now I'm going to return b2 okay so if I create this again and I do that so see that okay because it's a reference type it's reference assignment I change b1 of 0 equal to 2 and then b2 also changes and that changes to the value 2 because it, again when we the minute we did this assignment we did a reference reference assignment, not a not an independent copy. Not an independent copy. Now let's look at a, another example where we're gonna actually force the parameter in the function to be of storage type. Okay, a storage um, storage basically you're gonna store it. So what all I have to do is just put in a keyword called storage and I pass in the name of my variable and the type which is again it's a reference type, it's array. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to declare a storage reference type pointer of array. Okay. And I'm going to name it storage. Now, again, I don't have to do this if I take this out. Okay. It's just going to give me a warning, but that should be sufficient because anything, any local variables is still storage. Okay. But I just like to do that because I want to be consistent. Okay but any local variables will be stored in storage and now s is a point it's a reference assignment to storage array so if I change anything in storage array then s will also get changed okay s will also get changed so what I did here is I actually have this function being called from h and in h I declared a p the dynamic array I push the value for okay now this is storage okay and so that I even though I declared it as P and it's gonna be declared as storage okay I declare it's gonna be declared storage if I didn't have the storage keyword in my in my function then P would be passed as memory and that's not gonna work Okay, and that's when you get an independent copy over here, just like we did in the previous example here, right? Memory array is coming in as, an, as a memory-based located or a variable. Okay, so in this particular example, I'm forcing whatever is coming through storage array to be copied, to be placed in storage, not in memory. And the minute I do that, now I have a storage to storage assignment and I, I'm, I can play it safe now okay so again if we go back to what I was explaining before is any local variables you declare in in functions are storage there's place of storage doesn't there's a difference now it doesn't mean that it's not a, a value type it's never gonna be a value type it's always gonna be a reference type now what changes is how things get copied over okay so this is a reference type uint array of P is the dynamic I just declared a dynamic array I push the value for it's still in storage the minute I pass it into the function if I didn't have this storage keyword then it will be copied uh, to memory okay but I forced it to place it in storage and now I can have a storage to storage assignment and then we have the the usual if I change one va one end of the array then the other one it will change also so let's release this again and we're gonna call H so there you go so I push the value for 
into P, okay? And P goes in, okay, as a storage array, and then S, okay, is now a pointer. So I'm writing over what I just pushed. So whatever was written here, then S, okay, which is my pointer to my storage array that's coming in, uh, will will change. Okay, so anything that's coming in, I'm gonna write over, okay, and I'm gonna write over with 10, and then I'm just going to print out the reference at zero. Okay, so I changed the parameter coming in, and because I have S pointing to that, whatever's coming in, then that that's actually gonna change also. Reference copy, so I mean reference assignment, not a copy, reference assignment. So one changes, the other one changes also. Okay, so you have to remember that when you're dealing with reference types. So you not only need to know, it's simple to remember, reference types, arrays, structs, right? Simple. But there's a, a, a second component to this, which is the data location of where these are stored. And it's important to know this, especially when you're programming your contracts, that although you are bringing in things through functions, you have to make sure that you know what's being copied when you do an assignment and what's not okay and in this particular example although these both are reference types right one is in storage and this one is in memory and when you copy memory to storage then you're gonna always get an independent copy okay you're always gonna get an independent copy uh, so your results may vary your results are going to vary because again if in this example if I change anything in X sorry if I change anything in X over here then anything in Y in my memory array will not change because it's an independent copy it's an independent copy so you kind of forced it to be a value type which not really but it, it kind of is because of the memory location okay I hope I didn't confuse you too much it's a difficult concept to to be aware of uh, in terms of but once you understand this um, it's not hard I mean it you just have to be aware that the minute that you change the location of your variables of reference types uh, more specifically when there's when they're through functions okay is when you're gonna run into these issues where if you get a reference I mean, if you get a, a parameter passed in through a function that's of reference type, then y it's not going to really be treated as a reference assignment. It's going to be treated as a copy. Okay. But if they're both the same, such as this example down here, memory to memory, that's an assignment, that's a reference assignment. Uh, and same thing here, uh, storage to storage, that's a reference assignment. Okay, that's a reference assignment. Okay, so hope you learned a little bit in this lesson of reference types a little bit of a difficult concept to understand but if you have any questions you could always post questions on the youtube video channel or you can contact me at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com or check me out at www.parttimeadjunct.com thanks see you next video